So welcome to the Royal Roto from ITV. Now, um, it's fair to say a little bit has changed since we last recorded uh, one of these. We used to have a queen. We now have a king. The Prince of Wales is a different person to the one he was before. Um, so, so welcome. We were just actually discussing before we press the record button. How do you open this podcast? Um, so Lizzie's here. Hi, Lizzie. How are you? Hello. Yep. I'm, I'm all right. Thank you. And <laughs> right. we're joined by a guest this week. We have we? a guest, um, one of our colleagues and friends, uh, Mary Nightingale, who spent a lot of time with us, didn't you, over those, I did. those 10 days? I did. Well, I it, was it 10 days? It felt... 10, 11, 12. It felt like five minutes, but equally it felt like 10 years. Yes. So yes. Uh, time kind of, lost its meaning in a way. It did. It was intense. It was... <laughs> Um, busy mm. and um, and a lot changed. We, history was unfolding before our very eyes, wasn't it? It really was. And it felt, I mean, you and I were in the studio together on the day. Yes, we should talk about that. The news we? broke. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and I think, you know, it's something you and I've rehearsed for. I've yes. rehearsed for this for 20 years ever yeah. since I've Everyone been knows idea. broadcasters do rehearsals, Absolutely. but there's, there's nothing quite like the real thing. The, is there? the real thing. And uh, when we got into work uh, on that Thursday, 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 yes. Thursday uh, 8th September, we'll yeah. never forget that day in the and, and I I came out of the tube and my phone lit up and I just ran into work. And then you and I got ready and we went into the studio after Nina Hussain came off there yeah. with the lunchtime and we were there until ready and waiting weren't we? because we knew something night. was happening wouldn't we so, we knew yeah. i mean you and lizzie knew but you didn't know but you kind of mm. knew but you can't do anything until you get the actual official statement well earlier that week chris and i'd been up at balmoral where the queen had received her 15th prime minister there'd been photographs of her we'd spoken to people that had seen her and they said you know yes she was frail but also alert and engaged and the following day, we had the news that, that she had cancelled that Privy Council. Um, but everything changed mm. very Well, you know, we, we made a point, didn't we, when we were in Balmoral on the Tuesday when Boris Johnson went out the door and Liz Truss came in the door. And lots changed in politics as well in that time as well. Yes, but anyway, that's, that's for another podcast. Um, and yet we made a point, didn't we, of actually seeking out the, the photographer from the Press Association, Jane Barlow, because she was in the room. So everyone now knows that picture, the picture of the Queen standing there, not necessarily the one with Liz Truss, but the one of her on her own with her walking stick standing in the... Uh, which room was it? The drawing room at Balmoral, wasn't it? And uh, Jane Barlow said to us, yeah, no, of course she was frail. Well, well yeah, 96 years old people normally are frail and she said no she potted about the room and um, lovely smile beautiful smile looked really kind of happy and content and everyone she? that we'd spoken to said you know how sort of in to coin the term that the palace always use in good spirits mm. and was <laughs> yeah. engaged and alert um on that day and you know i think we talked a lot during the 12 days about the queen and you know she said on her 21st birthday, I'm going to commit my whole life to serving. Whether it be long or and short, and it was she, very it was long. long yeah. really did until, you know, the very last well, yeah, and, and uh, you know, It's it, amazing. It's not it, our really? job to speculate, of course, but she clearly wanted to do the, the, the 15th Prime Minister, mm -hmm. felt that was her duty to do that for the country. You know, when she heard about the Conservative leadership election she probably thought okay that's a job for me coming down the track to invite my 15th prime minister to form a government and she really did want to do that we heard yeah. we've heard that she yeah. was really determined that it even would be they were saying that look it, that yes because actually we've heard king. this haven't we that the the now mm. king or previously prince of wales could have stepped in for her just like he stepped in for her at the state opening of parliament she was determined to do it determined and then the next day um privy council meeting was meant to be we were a bit worried then weren't we because it was meant to be online virtual yes. and it didn't happen and it didn't happen and i was i was doing evening news that night and, and you wouldn't I was notice i was at the home headlines. <laughs> yes <laughs> i was I, at home going you oh, were <laughs> got to set up this camera thing there's breaking news so. yeah and but we weren't you know you kind of royal professionals you know what this stuff means and i was writing the headlines and i remember i said to you lizzie okay so they've cancelled the privy council meeting is that a thing you know is that something we should be concerned about because of course we you know increasingly yeah. over the recent years we've 
got more and more concerned just look, yeah, any but look what she's cancelled she's cancelled state yeah. opening of parliament she cancelled Maundy Thursday she cancelled the Commonwealth Day service she didn't even go to the Remembrance Sunday yeah. I mean, we and knew all those are big things all those things and so privy council cancelling a virtual privy council meeting we kind of thought well okay she's cancelled other stuff she's not but felt well you spotted it though Lizzie you said this is this is serious I think what worried me that evening was I mean, I, I, I wasn't thinking at the time how serious it could be, but what worried me was that it was supposed to be virtual and an online mm. meeting and other things that she had cancelled perhaps had been sort of in person because and required of her mobility. quite a lot of effort. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the fact she couldn't even do a virtual thing was... A signal that... Yeah. Yeah. So we went anyway, well, on the so th on the third. So then we had the announcement from Buckingham Palace, uh, sort of lunchtime on uh, Thursday, that actually she's under very serious medical supervision, and the f then we had guidance that the whole family are flying up there, and, and, and that was what was that was like the alerts oh, us to it being that really was serious. that was like when we hit the, the the red panic button, wasn't it, in the newsroom? Mm. And I, I'm, I remember coming out of the lunchtime news after having done the. Or well, Buckingham Palace have just said she's not very well. Came out of the lunchtime news, walked into the newsroom, the entire news newsroom is standing up everybody you know that's when that's a big story <laughs> don't you yeah. the whiteboard is out the editors there writing things on the whiteboard yeah. and suddenly i thought oh jesus i think this this might be it um yeah. and and so it was and so it was and so you and i walked straight back into the studio at two and and i was ready in a black jacket and you were wearing a black jacket but well, what tie should you wear well this is it should question. you wear a black tie um prematurely what have what you know what if this comes to nothing what if she rallies and comes you know yeah and in the end obviously she didn't so um we have to we have to very carefully choose what we yeah what we because wear. you don't what you don't want to do is be in any way inappropriate or you know disrespectful or you don't want to upset any viewers and, you know, I'm thinking back to all those years ago when the Queen Mother died and poor old Peter Sissons yeah. wore a burgundy tie. And, and this, people was, still talk about it to this day. Uh, and here yeah, we are, yeah, you know, yeah. and and it's I mean, it sounds in some ways trivial, but it's really important not to upset people. And that's. You know, I should have known something was going to happen if you were in the studio because you, you should, were be you fair. were the announcer <laughs> on ITV of the Queen Mother's death when you on, on a Saturday I believe that was Easter Saturday two thousand two yeah. and and the fact that you were there on uh, Thursday the eighth of September clearly yeah. meant that it was a time for another big announcement and actually w w I mean we talk about it quite glibly now but actually in the history of ITV the company we all work for clearly. Uh, w we have never, as a broadcaster, announced the death of a monarch because ITV was born no. in 1956. Yeah. The Queen obviously came to the throne uh, after her father's death in 1952. So I think that kind of weighed quite heavily on us as well, didn't it? Definitely. Like, oh, actually, this is something we've never done as a channel before. You, you don't want to mess it up. No. You really don't because this is history. Yes. And you and I kept saying to each other, wow, this well, is history happening on our watch. So I recall so we went on air at five o'clock and we had to do the sort of quite serious but no announcement, we don't know, but mm -hmm. we, we decided. Kind of holding pattern. It was like a kind of, yes, th that's where it began. Announcement came at uh, at 6.30. Now, I, I, I remember sitting there, seeing the announcement in my phone, thinking, oh my goodness, here's the announcement. But it had to come from from you. You were you were the, the main presenter. I wanted to kind of pass my phone across the desk and say, look at this. Uh, yeah. But you obviously heard in your ear that was something was happening. And then, Shippy, I wish you had. And the auto cue then kind of. Yeah, so. So this, if I wake up screaming in the night, yes. this will be why. So we've had, you know, we've been in the studio since two, looking at everything. Um, and we are, and, and then they said, and we went on air at five, but as you say, we're in a holding pattern for an hour and a half. We thought the announcement might come at six, if you recall, and it didn't. And then at 6.30 it did. And they said in my ear, because everyone listening will probably know you and I wear earpieces and that's yeah. how our gallery, our control room uh, communicates with us. Shout at us. Yes, yeah, shout at us, curse at us. And they said, right, we've got it. We've got the statement. We've got it. It's on auto queue. We're going to go with it. And I think we might have been ending a, a, a package. A chat, of, I think we were chatting. I can't, we, I can't remember. No. And so I, I kind of looked down and I said, okay, um, and they said, it's on auto queue. And I looked up and I said, well, we have had, I'm afraid we've had a statement from the palace. And um, it is as follows. And I looked up and the auto queue was entirely blank. <laughs> and they started, uh, then the shouting started in my ear and they were going, where is the, and I won't use the expletive, where's the, where's the statement, where's the statement, where's the statement? And uh, and then in the end, and it felt like 
about 55 years, but I'd imagine it was like a couple of seconds, I'm not sure. Because, you know, you can't ad-lib yeah. this. You, you and I used to ad-libbing things. Yeah. Mistakes happen on programmes all the time. Mm. Your job as a broadcaster is to cover over the gaps, ad-lib, you know, gently take you on to the next story. You can't ad-lib uh, an official statement from Buckingham Palace about the death of the monarch. So, fortunately, our director, Lorna, decided to read it in my ear because they all had it. <laughs> yes. I was the only one who didn't have it. Yes. I felt like passing my phone across yeah, the desk. Well, that you know, I wish you had, that. Shippy. I mean, <laughs> kind of thought, I, or I could have said, look, over to Shippy <laughs> at this point. So, um, and she just read it to me line by line and yes. I repeated it. Yes. Very slowly. That. Well, but, and there's no, there's no, and that's wrong okay. With that, course, and and look, it doesn't matter. It's not about us or our prowess as broadcasters, but I, of course it's not. It's much, much, much bigger than any individuals apart from this massive uh, yes. announcement, which will hit the country we know hard. So you don't want to mess it up. You want to no. do the institution proud. You want to do your employers proud. You want to do the viewers proud. Yeah. And so that's what felt quite, quite lonely <laughs> for <laughs> that's that. That's very lonely. Many actually, seconds yeah, yeah, actually it for was, you yeah. more even, you know, for me, the, the, that's your, that's the moment. It's your yeah, job to, that's to make that that's announcement, the moment. wasn't it? Um, and, and some of the reviews said, oh, uh, you know, Mary looked to be overcome by emotion. Well, it was a big moment. <laughs> I was mostly overcome by, Fear. I haven't got any <laughs> words to read at this point. But because yeah. I was with you, Chris, as ever, if you've got Shippy in the studio beside you, everything's fine. And it was fine. And it well, doesn't and, matter, and, right? And so then kicked off a... a, a, a a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 day plan, whatever it was. Yeah, um, marathon. Yes. I mean, because there, there was always, I mean, Lizzie, you might be w good to explain this, but there, there is a kind of 10 day plan. There always was. We knew the funeral couldn't happen on a Sunday. It had to be a Monday. But it always depended on what time of day the death was announced. In this case, it was half past six. So And where she died. And where she died, being Scotland. So, uh, but, but the what transpired was that that didn't turn out to be the, the the announcement day or what we might call d day it turned out to be d minus one because it was so late in the day yeah and we were always told and we, you know it won't come as a surprise to people that we've had a lot of briefings on what happens for this moment so that we can do it as well as possible and because of the time of day that the announcement happened it did mean that a lot of the things that would have happened on d day um weren't possible so yeah. they shifted the that guns to and the, the bells and all yeah. the rest of it but but also like the king was always due to make a speech to the nation on the day of his mother's death mm -hmm. but it, well when it happens at 6 30 in the evening you then have to shunt it to the next day so but actually it meant yeah. that the, the whole schedule could could start properly the following day and be followed you know carefully and uh, appropriately mm. and um you know the the, the bells and the Yes, it made the, the next gun day very... The salutes and yeah. the address and the service of Thanksgiving at and there was Paul's, the, that could all happen that day. There was the geography of Scotland as well, wasn't there? So, but Which you know, I actually yeah. thought, so the, there were different plans depending on location of death. And I, I thought, you know, the, the fact that she died in Scotland um, meant that we had a slightly different plan to if she had died at Windsor or Sandringham or Buckingham Palace. But it meant that, you know, we know how much the royal family and how much she loved Scotland. Mm. And... You know, to have that service of Thanksgiving at St Giles Cathedral, for her to lie at rest at St Giles Cathedral, for that journey from Balmoral down side, to yeah, oh, Palace amazing. Hollywood House via Dundee, mm -hmm. and um, I thought that was really special actually to be able to to to, yeah. to you know for Scotland to be such a big part of the yeah. plans and, no, we, we and can't get such beautiful weather. Scotland has never. Looked oh, it didn't lovely. look amazing. Didn't Sorry, it? And actually, no. There was even like, there were there were moments of rain, weren't there? But it always yes. happened kind of at the right point. <laughs> so the Prince of Wales was saying on an engagement the other day that when the family were all up at Balmoral just after she died, there were five rainbows that appeared over Balmoral, and he said rainbows never appear at Balmoral, so yeah, she must have been lots looking of over of them. rainbows. Rainbows at Windsor. Yeah, as well, rainbows wasn't there? over Buckingham Palace. Palace. Yeah. Yeah. Lots it's of rainbows. Quite, quite remarkable, that whole thing, wasn't it? And, yeah, it was uh, amazing. I mean, look, we can't go through li this thing by day by day because this podcast will then go on for about 10 days and mm -hmm. that, that's that's not going to do anyone <laughs> any favours. But, I mean, I think you just touched on some of it there, Lizzie, about the sort of the Scotland part of the plan. That was quite something. Me and Mary were in Scotland and, and you, Lizzie, as well. We won't talk about the train journey there. Yeah, let's no, not no, go there. We don't talk about that. 
Um, but, it, yeah, I mean, I think Scotland playing its full part in the way that it did. And just the, as you said, the Royal D side um, looked amazing with the with the hearse as it travelled down. Uh, I mean, th there's a few things that really stick in my mind from looking at those pictures. We were... We had a program on air covering them live, didn't we? And it was um, there was the the line of tractors, mm -hmm. the line of horses that yes. people were doing spontaneously, and then everyone on top of like motorway junctions, cars stopping on the other carriageway. Everywhere, way. The, the, along everywhere, the whole, whole route. route. It was which took about route. six hours. Yeah. There yeah. were people stopped, but I love that it that it went through Ballata, which. If you yes. don't know the geography up there, then Ballater is the village mm. that is close to the castle, and they they're are really local. they're local, and mm. and they really protect the royal family. Yeah, and all those stories sort of, of like, of well, we see the queen popping around shopping, we yeah. say hello, she says hello, and no one bothers her. I mm. can't, I still can't actually believe that that happened, but it kind of did. Cause but that's it's one yeah. of the reasons that she and the royal family love going there so much is that they can get away from the yes. public eye. They can really sort of live as Go to the butchers, normal and existent as possible. Yeah. As normal royal family. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. royal normal family. You know, yeah. long and walks, barbecues, yeah. horse rides. I mean and the scenery up there is spectacular. And Ballater and the, the people and actually it was I suppose we've had this in a few different ways, in terms of the, the hearse, then the state hearse in London, then the, the, the coffin on the gun carriage and all the rest of it. But we I suppose we haven't people didn't quite know how to react. Do you nod your head mm -hmm. in 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 respectful silence mm -hmm. do you applaud because she had a long life well lived do you i mean what do you do do you throw uh, flowers do you what do some you people, do, i think yeah. there was a mixture of everything really yeah. um, I, I kind of noticed a bit of difference um this is speeding on a few days between when sh when the queen's coffin was moved from buckingham palace to the lying in state and god there's a whole other story about all those queues but um the, 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 i think there was there was applause then that was the beginning of the lying in state mm. period there was a definite different feeling, wasn't there, on the funeral day because people kind of thought, oh, this is it. This is yeah. her very, very last journey. Uh, and that was very, like, I don't think people could quite process that they were never going to see. Yeah. And and I again. think just the enormity of the ceremonial and the, you know, oh, the yeah. sheer spectacle of it, I think sort of silenced people yeah. in a way. Yeah, what a spectacle it was. Oh, it was incredible. incredible. I mean, that, that <clears> evening <throat> that the hearse drove from RAF Northolts mm. back to Buckingham yeah. Palace for her final journey back to Buckingham Palace and we were at the palace weren't we and we were in the rain and it was <laughs> yeah. absolutely I mean the crowds there was a sea of people but they were in absolute silence yeah, but they were like yeah. on the A40 but for, for yeah, you know on yeah. the outskirts of London coming through Northolt they were like on Ladbroke Grove they were standing outside Hyde Park they were on speakers you know speakers corner they were uh, you know on they were everywhere and, and, and they all had and their phones surging. up with yes. their lights it was like a yeah, yeah. sea of lights as she drove it's almost like people the, were holding candles yeah. wasn't it it's was a kind of modern version I found it very moving when, when the, the motorcycle outriders who do these kind of things all the time you take prime ministers you take royals you do all that and then just as they went into the palace they all lined up and they all bowed their heads and the took their helmets through. off it's quite something. And we should it? mention the hearse Amazing. actually. The the hearse she Whoa. was consulted yeah. on helped design and it was state to hearse. allow the the hearse to be as and the coffin to be as visible as possible for that journey. And we talked about how, you know, in, in death as in life she wanted to be Seen to be believed, yeah. and it did. The lights well. inside. I know it was yeah. almost perfect with the weather because actually, yeah. because in September, heading into autumn, it was getting mm. a little bit dark by that time. And the rain came on off the floor, it was reflecting. Rain, yes. and it was a bit dark, but therefore the coffin had light. And I remember first seeing the lights in the coffin, thinking, "Oh, there's lights. Is that normal? You yeah. don't normally see that." And <laughs> it's then really suddenly not. <laughs> we find out, no, it's not normal, and this is because she wanted to be seen. Like, but everything about it was so carefully planned and choreographed, wasn't it? And talking to one of someone I know who who used to be in the palace comms team and I was saying wow that shot of the c17 Globemaster mm. kitty wake was that it's called yeah, that's his call sign when it's got a royal <coughs> on board kitty <coughs> hawk kitty hawk I beg your pardon right. and I said wow that shot of it kind of banking off from Edinburgh airport and he said oh yeah we rehearsed that yeah. we yeah, rehearsed yeah. that with those planes over the years we knew where it would bank we knew where the cameras would be yeah yeah and yeah. I just the amount of planning. Incredible. The decision yeah. of everything was extraordinary. Yeah, yeah it was amazing, wasn't and it? We Although mention... some of it ran a bit late, I have to say. I mean, I'm not used to rules ever being late at anything. But, you know, when we were in Edinburgh, Mary, do you remember the, the, uh, when yeah. they processed up the uh, the Royal Mile way itself? Uh, From Hollywood, and, yeah. We haven't even spoke about that, haven't we? Like, the yeah, the Royal amazing. Mile, that very narrow, cobbled, historic, quite small and intense space, isn't it? As, quite as intimate, it, really, yeah, very isn't intimate. it? As, it, as they walked up there. That, ha that was late. Um, the the I think the, the 
wasn't the coffin arriving in Windsor uh, at the very, very end on, on the yeah. funeral day? That and was leaving late. Westminster Hall, it was really? a couple of minutes late. That never really happens. I, I never quite got to the bottom of why that was. No. Just, I'm not used to royals being late. They turn up when they turn up, these royals. Yes, but, so. you know, there was, uh, uh, and, and everything went, I was going to say, like clockwork. Well, maybe not quite like clockwork, but the sheer volume of the different elements of the armed forces the mm. you know the the pipers the the, the pipers the 142 oh, naval ratings yes. i mean what a sight that was i mean Absolutely pulling astonishing. physically pulling a gun carriage but n n no individual looking like they were pulling yes. No, indeed. Just that's what 142 people working yes. in perfect harmony And then we harmony find out why. Why is it? Is because when Queen Victoria's coffin uh, arrived at Windsor Station, it was because the some of the horses bolted or, something. or one of the yeah. things broke. So suddenly the Navy saw their chance to zoom in there. Because actually the hill in Windsor is quite a big hill. And all yeah. the Navy came in and pulled it up themselves. And that tradition has remained. And, and, and I mean, let's, we haven't even talked about the pallbearers. But the other thing oh, that I... Pool bearers, the pallbearers. The pallbearers. But I particularly love the, the 200 pipers and the drums wow, and so on, which yeah. and I was so close outside the abbey and it just made your made your bones vibrate. It yeah. was you know, you felt it as yeah. as now much that, that as first heard move it. From the lying in oh, state Hall to West. Quite a short move actually, wasn't Quite it? Quite a short move. We haven't spoken about George and Louis no, going behind the car. Oh <laughs> Where do you George and Charlotte but also George and Charlotte, sorry. And yeah. just one thing about before I forget, the uh naval ratings and the, the pipers they were led by, was it three or four women, women police officers on horses? So yeah. the mounted police were mounted women police, at the front of yeah. it, which, again, I thought, well, that's... But there were men, when the, the that really long procession, it was a long procession, <clears> when it went from after the funeral service to, to Wellington Arch for the transfer to the hearse. That was a long procession. But the, the Mounties were there, the, the Royal Canadian oh, yeah, the Mounted Mounties. Police. You know, like, it's just... Oh, I'd have forgotten And all the these Mounties. connections to the Queen and her different organisations. Yeah. And then there was her... Some of her staff, you know, everyone kept saying, coming "Who's out that?" Of the palace, yeah, and you're really yeah, coming yes, out the palace, really but then lovely. everyone said, "Who's the tall guy walking?" Because he was so tall, and tall he's Paul. called Tall Paul, tall who's Paul. one of the Queen's equerries. But and then there uh, was another guy who was even taller than Tall Paul. <laughs> Do you remember him? He was uh, uh, Matthew, seven foot two. Matthew McGee. Yes. Yes, yeah, so he's one of the assistant private secretaries, and like all these tall people in the palace you've never seen before. Because <laughs> actually, that, that's the thing with courtiers; they're normally quite faceless. You, you know the Queen; you don't yeah. really know the people around them. Most people don't know who Sir Ed Edward Young is, or yeah. what he looks like. Um, yeah. You know the current private secretary. And all those changes that are currently going on in the palace at the moment. We were having a conversation yesterday, weren't we, with a, with an insider, and they were like, just everything they've got to kind of work through now, like patronages, and yeah, we've done the titles, and you know, all the big stuff, mm. the, you know, the easy stuff, but the patronages and who works for who, and there's talk about redundancies because actually there's one less household, one yeah. fewer, one less household now. Um, you know, it's just it's the new cipher which has appeared, hasn't cipher it? Cipher that's appeared. We we went to Wales with the Prince and Princess of Wales. I mean, like I did think including people that had worked so closely with the Queen. I mean, mm. they had a really, you know, lots yeah. of them had had worked for her for years. Yeah. And they did have a very close relationship with her, mm. and for her, for them to be of so, course, yeah, so included, yeah. I thought was was really wh really lovely. Nobody actually saw Angela Kelly. Did they? No, she, she was at Westminster Abbey. She was yeah. right, but, but we, nobody, we didn't spot her, did we? On on the day, I saw a picture of her in the newspaper, but because yeah. yeah. I was looking out, because of course she was so close. Here's someone who works close. really closely. The Queen's yeah. dressmaker really close. you know, really closely with the Queen. And so during the pandemic, pandemic they had the bubble. Yeah. Yes, and she ate most of her meals, I think, with the Queen. Amazing. Really. really, and the pallbearers. Come on, don't forget the pallbearers. What a oh, I mean, literally every time I saw them, from the moment they sort of lifted it and carried, lead the, lined. You know, yeah, you know, <laughs> when did you first see them carrying? There was some carrying in Scotland, wasn't there? Because yes. um, we didn't. Because it, it, when the when we first saw the coffin, which kind of felt like, oh blimey, this has been a few days. She died. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, that was Thursday, but Sunday we saw the coffin, didn't mm -hmm. we, for the first time leaving yeah, we didn't, Balmoral? We didn't see the coffin. Um, wasn't carried. Leaving the ballroom at Balmoral um, and departing. Yeah. Carried the by Gillies, game gamekeepers. Game Again, yeah. Wonderful. the close relationship with her yeah, yeah. people that worked mm. for her. So we saw it for the first time leaving those gates of Balmoral. Yeah. With um, the royal standard. Yeah, and, and the first time I yeah. saw those those uh, eight pallbearers was, was in Edinburgh when they had to carry mm. it from the hearse in, into the Palace, the palace of Hollywood, Hollywood House. <laughs> and but then again, into St. John's Cathedral. And at every both Balmoral and the Palace of Hollywood House. There was time allowed for staff to pay their respects, yes. 24 hours for, for staff to have their own private time to say their goodbyes, because so much of this was public. And, you know, I, was, I just kept looking at members of the royal family thinking, you're having to publicly 
grieve. Mm. You know, this is a very, that is the very personal so challenging. moment. And they did allow, you know, private moments. Like when the coffin arrived back at Buckingham Palace, the cameras weren't there inside the palace. And that allowed the family their sort of final mm. moment to say goodbye before mm. it was, the coffin was sort of handed back to the state. Yeah. Oh, and today, obviously, what the day we're recording this Thursday is when St George's Chapel opens to the public again and they can see for the first time the ledger stone, which now has King George VI, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh. On Explain what a ledger stone is, because I would have called it a plaque, but it's not, is it? What is a ledger, ledger stone? stone? Well, because it's, it's not like a tombstone in the sense of the, in a... In a graveyard yes. it, it is lying it's on flat the floor. on the floor it's a big black stone i'm sure someone probably told me what belgian stone marble I belgian think. marble there we go well done black and it's in the george the sixth memorial chapel and the ashes of the queen's sister princess margaret also that's the second time you've got a fact over me actually because somebody sa somebody said to me uh, yes. i was watching and uh, mary nightingale <laughs> said something like didn't you say something to me in one of those long broadcasts about uh, the first time that the the Christmas message was yes. recorded the in colour. Yes. It was 1976. And yes, went, and it was in the blue... Bow, bow room. Yeah. Bow room. The bow room. Yes, and all and I could went, off... And said, I went, I didn't know that. I don't know. And I was like, yes. <laughs> you actually said him. on air, and some one of my friends <laughs> laughed at me and said, oh, actually, yeah, Mary and I got one well, over you. It so wasn't well. very seemly, was it? It's. Uh, <laughs> but I was so thrilled. Thing is, it's, it's actually quite difficult to get the tone right on these things, isn't it? Because yeah. this is not a tragedy. The, she was a 96-year-old mm -hmm. woman who led a very full life um, and an amazing life. Um, but it was a moment of history, and mm. it was a very sombre moment for the nation. Mm. even before the government got back to work <laughs> and that's yes. an entirely different yes, story. Yes, that's a different um, podcast altogether. Yes, yeah, so... Um, yeah, know. exactly, and I, yeah. I think, I hope we got it right. I, you know, I, I hope mostly we got it right. Perhaps we didn't from time to time, but, uh, you know, we're all only human. But I, I think that what you always try and do with these things, of course, it's a big state occasion, it's royalty and all of that, but you want to have humanity in it, yes. don't you? And, yeah. and, you know, and you and I finished that, first um the the day of the announcement and uh, and we came out of the studio and there was kind of like a i couldn't stop crying partly because i hadn't eaten all day and i was exhausted but you always know there eat. was a release yes there was a re you had a sandwich i noticed you, you survive eating. off a lot of tea actually i you do literally do I have do. tea on your I drip do. feed that's one thing i, I have I, learnt from these last few days i like tea yeah. <laughs> um but you know i think that it for a lot of people it would have been a very emotional experience just all of that and and someone made a good point, I thought, I don't know what you think about that, it, it almost was a chance for the country to mourn after Covid as well. There were so much, in a way, wrapped up mm. in, you know, it was a release of a great sadness yeah, and, in and, a way. And to be fair, it's probably something felt more sharply by older generations as yes. well, because they've known the Queen for longer kind of thing. If you're, yeah. but I I think know, if you're 20 or 15 or 20, I mean, you might not... people probably mm. thought about their grandparents yes. as well. Yeah. and. They yeah. might not have had the so same connection with the Queen over all those years. And there aren't that many people. Yeah. In fact, I met one in um, in Swansea the other day who said that she is old enough to remember King George VI. We oh, don't really? meet many people not like many. that. Not many. Yeah. And then I had to delicately say, well, that makes you of a certain <laughs> age, but I'm not going <laughs> to have this conversation. Yeah, the, this. let's not do numbers. No. Well, I, I mean, for me, I, my mum was a couple of years younger than the Queen. She's been dead for 10 years. And so... I felt it personally, and I think, you know, I felt very sad because my mum loved the Queen, you know. Yeah. Ladies of that age, a whole generation, modelled their style, you know, how they had their hair cut, you know, wearing brooches, all that. She was a style icon of that generation, yeah. and I think for so many people watching, listening, she, the death of the Queen represented the death of some other white-haired old lady that they had lost at some point, and loved and still mm. missed you know and i i just think it was a sort of it was a it was a moment yeah, in that maybe they, in that final image of her that final picture at balmoral she did look a little vulnerable maybe mm. just a bit like you know on her own she, she wasn't on her own there were other people in the room and liz truss was about to come storming in but you know but nevertheless that picture kind of caught a moment didn't it and uh, she just looked very old yeah and you know and, and i think we, We've all been keeping an eye on photographs of her, and the 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 change in her since the death of the Duke, I think, was particularly Quite dramatic. Wasn't dramatic, it? wasn't yeah. it? And that's again, you you know, we can all we can all empathise with that. We've yeah. all known elderly couples separated by death, who the remaining partner kind of you know. But I think last. one one of the loveliest things is that she has been reunited with the Duke of Edinburgh. They're both 
buried in the George yes. VI Memorial Chapel. Yeah. They've been reunited. Which mm. Yes, because he sweet. yes his his coffin was waiting for her in the royal vault, and now they've been uh, they've been buried together. And I think that they have, yes, we talked about the legislone legislone just now. They're in, Do you remember the, the last the picture that she chose to release from her private collection on the eve of the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral was them in Scotland on the coils yes. of Mick yes. sitting on the picnic blanket. Taken by uh, the, the Countess of Wessex. Wessex, yeah. So you yeah. can see how well, much and then Scotland then meant to them. Laughing and yeah. so relaxed. I love that picture of and them. And then there was that image that uh, they released of the Queen uh, to say that, yes, she has now been buried, because we should point mm. out that was a very private, a private part. That mm -hmm. was just for yeah. the family. Mm -hmm. And it was her, again, in Balmoral. In the heather. And she was walking up the heather, walking up a hill, looked like she didn't have a care um, in the world. And, then, and the Buckingham Palace repeated that phrase that um, the King put in his statement on the day of the death, may flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Oh, it's Such a wonderful phrase from Hamlet, isn't it? So I love that bit in the speech where he said, unto my darling mama, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late papa. Oh, and what a journey it was. What a journey. Wow, it was. And we should talk about that King's address. That was uh, like it literally hit every, it, it rose to the moment it really for did. sure. I mean, everyone was looking to him saying, what, how on earth are you going to sum this up in a speech? Well, I think he did. And he did a remarkable job. And I'm sure there have been, or well, we know, don't we, there have been drafts of this speech going around for years. Of course there have been because... They've, they've known this day was coming, but um, it was well executed, well delivered. It was the right tone. It looked back and looked forward. It mentioned Harry and Meghan. Yeah, I was going to say name check them, didn't yeah, it? And confirmed that was... William and Kate as a new Prince and Princess of Wales. It says, I'm not going to do any more meddling. Well, not to that extent. What was the exact phrase on the Words meddling? Words to that effect. My life will, of course, change as I take up my new responsibilities. It will no longer be possible me to give so much of my time and energies to the charities and issues for which I care so deeply. In other words, climate change, environment, um, yeah, well, we architecture, know, we know, we know what that. he thinks, and that's yes. the difference, I suppose, in We've the always fact that, he's been, yeah. you know, Prince of Wales for so long. But his role does now have to change, and and you know that that address showed an awareness of that and a recognition. And mm. talking of Wales, talking of Wales, we've been, we've been, and so have <laughs> William and Kate. Uh, as the new prince and princess of Wales. So they went back to Anglesey, which was where they lived as, um, as newlyweds, uh, newlyweds it, yeah. and where George had his first home. That's when he was, I think I put in a script the other day. I mean, um, when they last lived in Anglesey, they didn't have kids. Um, or when they first lived in Anglesey, mm. sorry, they didn't have kids. He was flying helicopters for a living and he wasn't heir to the throne. Mm. And Things she used changed. to go <laughs> shopping in the local supermarket, yeah. didn't she? Do you Things remember? have changed, haven't they? Haven't they just? Yeah. yeah, yeah everyone, everyone's been sort of bumped up a... A row, obviously, he's now the heir to the throne. And, uh, and we also had some guidance, didn't we, on his or possibly not his investiture? That he's very, very unlikely to have one anytime soon. Uh, if they do, it'll be massively scaled down on the 1969 version that his uh, his father had. Um, at, at, go on. At, oh yeah, <laughs> Kainarfon Castle. <laughs> He's been practising. Oh, do you know how many, last time I went there and I did a report from there, I had so many complaints that I literally... Did you say I Carnarvon? Think, I probably said some... Carnarvon or something very <laughs> English. So um, I was, <laughs> I, I had so practicing. many, so much training, say Kainarfon. And they said, don't, just roll your R's, you know, sing it, Kainarfon Castle. Hugh Edwards would be proud. Uh, let's, let's ask him to see. <laughs> <laughs> but there see is a real, is. there's a real recognition, isn't there, by and who is, all oh, the sorry, royal family. And who is, on Welsh, who, who was the last born? Oh, Go who on. was the last Welsh-born Prince of Wales? <gasps> uh, go on. I've Owain got Glyndwr. Very good. I get something else I had. To, I had to learn that to do in a live, and I focused so much on that word. I think I stumbled my way through <laughs> the rest of the live, like but, normal words I couldn't say. But I got Owain <laughs> Glyndwr right. I don't so think he, you should so beat if you want, up too his, much about History that. buffs will know that he was proclaimed in the year 1400, and there is now an Owain Gwyndor Day, which was the, exactly ah. the same day that the, the, the new king went to Wales. Just coincidentally, that wasn't But it purposely. provoked a bit of... But it provoked a bit of, hold on a minute, you, the, here is a, once again the English monarchy installing a new prince and princess of Wales that we haven't been consulted on. Mm. So that issue is that I wouldn't say it was a massive issue. Uh, you know, we saw lots of people, didn't we, outside that community church in Swansea. It was like a... a a rock star's welcome. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen really? a walk about like that for a while. Yeah. They, they were received so warmly. People this, were ta taking selfies. Yes, and this is a very less, flowers, you know, this flags, is a very less affluent part of 
Swansea, that's purposely why they went there. And I think that sort of chimed with the whole thing about, look, we're not going to focus on a big investor ceremony and like celebrate this title we've got. We just want to sort of get on with the job, meet mm. real people and find out what's going on uh, yeah, in Wales. I was Wales. chatting to someone and they said, you know, that, that the Prince and Princess of Wales were determined to get to Wales as quickly as they could. Yeah. And, you know, they did take the first opportunity. Royal Morning. It was Monday. Uh, finished yeah. and they were straight to Wales they made it Blanks their first port of call yep. and, yeah. and they have you know they've already established a link through those early years in Anglesey as you say so yes they have that yeah. link William and, and did say that he needs to um brush up on his Welsh though so maybe yeah. you could well, speak to you could could well uh, if he wants any advice I, I, can, <laughs> I, can, I can I can definitely give him some uh, but obviously his father famously went to Aberystwyth University to learn yeah. Welsh didn't he yeah. um, and, and and spoke in Welsh at his uh at the, the, the Senef didn't um I thought George and Charlotte did extraordinarily well, though, during, during the, the day of the funeral. I yeah. mean, George is nine, Charlotte is seven. I, you know, I think we all appreciate that it was important for George to be there, given his future role and looking ahead. But still, he's nine, and to be in that procession... Very good, very good. The, the Queen said, didn't she, it's, uh, it, it's all about training. Life's all, in life, mm. it's all about training. If you're properly trained, you can do anything. And... And I loved, I, I've been sort of slightly <laughs> obsessively looking at some of the clips afterwards. And you can see the Princess of Wales, Catherine, new Princess of Wales, kind of, she's standing behind them quite a lot of the time. And you can see she's almost just giving them a little uh. nod. Did you see or a, the clip of Charlotte saying to George, Don't, you must bow. The rule, the rule is we have, have to, to bow. bow. Yes. She's, you can, she's, she's bow. quite sort of on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, in the same she? way that in the, the Jubilee, was it earlier this year? No, it was the, it was the, yeah, the, the Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah. She was telling Louis. She tell Louis, that's enough waving. Enough you know, yeah. He was waving yeah. like a madman. He said, good get, good get luck with that, Charlotte. <laughs> It'll take more than that to stop Louis waving. But we, yes, you know, the, we understand that there was a, a discussion, a family discussion. Mm. They considered very carefully about the inclusion of the children and they decided that they were up to it and they could do it. And, you know, I, they did both the, the state funeral at the Abbey and the yeah. St George's bit. It was a, a long day Actually, for them. But not Louis. Louis, we stayed at home. What you just said, Mary, about training. I, one of the interviews that we played uh, during this period was, was one that I did with Princess Anne um, a few years ago now, but talking about, you know, about her mother's legacy and, and, mm. and that of her father as well. And there was a thing I'd asked her, I just, I remember saying, what, what did you go, go for you, to your mum for training? You know, did she say, oh, hey, oh, mama, how do I do it? Her reply was, no, it's very much learn on the job. Oh, yes, she was okay. there if you needed her to correct something or, or to, to tweak something, but very much it was like, go out, do it, learn on the job. That, you know, don't, don't get it from me, you know, do it don't, don't get way. the theory, go and get the practice. Yeah, that's interesting. Princess, um, Princess Royal's role, she, she joined the... Uh, cortege, didn't she, for mm. the for the whole route from Balmoral to the Palace of Holyrood House. Yeah. She then walked in the procession um, to St yep. Giles Cathedral, did the vigil, and then she accompanied on the, the plane. On the plane. Mm. Yeah. Back. So she she did that whole journey back and and spoke in her statement about you know what a what an enormous privilege it was to spend the last twenty four hours. Yeah, with the I mean, queen. look, this this podcast could go on forever because we haven't even spoke about the lying in state, about no. what it was like to be in that hall and 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 the queues of people that wanted to experience it. And, yes, and <laughs> just the, and the vigil that the king and his siblings held around, and Prince Harry's uniform that he was allowed to wear when he did Without his vigil. Without the E2R and, on it and, at and, one and, point, and, 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 yeah. and you know, where, but you know, I th I have we got time to t touch on the queue? Have yep. we got time I think a we little bit? Yeah, no, because I, I mean, there's been so much attention on the queue for all sorts of other reasons, which and probably the queue to join the queue and the, the queue to join the queue and jumping queues or not jumping queues and all the, all that sort of yes. stuff. So let's not C even go there. But yeah. yeah, let's not go there. But um, I, I went uh, uh, as part of the as you did. You know, we used the media facility to go and observe the queue, and yeah. actually, it was a. You saw the queue more than you saw the coffin, didn't you? Because we were quite down. True, so I was. I was quite in, in a way. I was. Um, the queue I was wanted to go back and stand right next to the coffin, but we were taking. No, no, we way. were. But, but we were there to kind of just to take in what yeah. was happening. So that you know, I did it on the very first day, which mm -hmm. meant that on news at ten that night, I was able to explain 
what it was like. Yeah. Which I, th- you know, that that's my justification for yeah, not yeah. queuing. But I think obviously people saw David Beckham join the queue. Other people did, and uh, but you know there was a media facility. In fact, when I went in there, there was a couple of reporters from Japanese television who yes. were, you know, it wasn't as if all, it was all wasn't. Ex- media I thought it was going to be really exclusive, and thought, oh, this is just for royal correspondents. <laughs> I'm getting. Do you this think you've got a royal warrant to go it's there? It's going to be me. <laughs> They've obviously singled me out. Nope, there was a couple of Japanese there, a few Germans. I mean, it was all the newspapers. Anyone were there. that wants and to go rightly in, so. Can go in. Rightly so. Rightly yeah. so. You know, so you can report on it accurately. I think yes, that's exactly. And I, I certainly felt, uh, I felt glad that I was had seen it for myself because it was an astonishing thing, you know, humbling uh, in a way, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and people with toddlers and babies, and silent, and the oh, silence silent was, babies were silent. The silence in there was extraordinary. It was. It, it was. They put carpet down on the wall, so the even even the footsteps were muffled, and the, the babies we saw yeah. weren't. It was just babies. And the only sound you heard yeah. was when the changing of the vigil happened. Yes. You know, every twenty minutes they sort of stopped. Tap, 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 tap. tap. And it, it was you know, amazing. And then everyone, pretty much without exception, when they got to the north door to leave the hall, yeah. stopped, turned round, took one final Back. look, yeah. and then left. And and that was the best vantage point I think of the media position was you right there as people, as and people you could left. see that. I. Yeah. Some people were crying. Some yeah. people, some people were kind of were prepared with with like tissues or handkerchiefs. Other people were surprised that they were crying and were wiping tears away with the backs of yes. their hands. Other people just kind of were a bit stunned by the whole thing. But everyone looked back. Took one last look, and and people, you know, you people were queuing for twelve hours with a couple of toddlers, which I'm and the d- queue doesn't can't stop. even no, no. Just nothing keeps, it just keeps, keeps moving. Going. Yeah, yeah. Keeps moving. And people making friends in the, in yes. the line and like it was, it was kind I mean, of wonderful and. People, some people unifying. dressed very smartly. It was unifying, wasn't it? Yeah, it in a was. way, it the whole was. country Lots was kind of united. Not, not in the same yeah. level of grief. And I'm sure some people spent the bank holiday of the funeral doing completely different things. Yeah, you know, of course they did. But I think just that it was quite a sort of just unifying event. I think on the yes, whole, it wasn't was it? Yes, it was fascinating. How moving yeah. was it though to see the children and the grandchildren holding their vigils, and yeah. particularly, you know, Viscount Seven James, son of. He's only 14 Edward, he's or only 14. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's... They did, they they did, did really amazingly well. well. Yeah. You know, they all did it for their granny or great-granny or whatever, didn't they? You know, it's yeah. uh, it was an astonishing thing. One thing we haven't really spoken about, and I'm, I'm, I'm conscious that we need to wrap up, is 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 the Queen Consort. You know, oh. uh, and, and actually what a, what a masterstroke it was of the Queen, the late Queen, back in February on Accession Day, when she actually hit her 70-year jubilee, by the way. Everyone thinks it was June. It was actually mm-hmm. February she made the 70 years because that was the day her father died. Um, that was a masterstroke on that weekend to say, you know, I know what it means to have a consort by my side through this job, which can be quite a lonely job, and I want my son in due course, mm. as we now know it was only eight or nine months later, in due course to have that support from Camilla, and I want her to be known as the Queen Consort. Which was clever, wasn't it? Well, Because that story kind of disappeared. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a thing anymore, no. whereas it would have been a massive issue. Yeah when King Charles, you know, when, when he acceded. So he didn't and she, even know he was gonna be called King Charles. No, I mean, didn't, so didn't know so <laughs> yeah. much but but so much she had clearly thought, right, I'll sort that out, I'll sort that out yeah. and she had said, if you remember uh, I forget when it was now, I would like my son to be the new head of the Commonwealth. Yeah. You know, yeah. and twenty seventeen or eighteen? Eighteen. Was it? I just can't remember. Yeah. But all of those things, you know, that sorted, that sorted, yeah. that sorted. Even, you could say, not uncontroversially, Prince Andrew. That yep. sorted. Whether she provided the money or not, and there's some rumours that she did, but, you know, that's yeah. dealt with in terms of there won't be a court case going on and on and on and yeah. on. The only yeah. thing that she, well, who, who who is able to resolve it was the sort of ongoing tensions with uh, Harry and Meghan. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Yeah. My personal view was, I, I mean, if I was running the royal family and I'm not, I would have said, wear your uniform because that just looks... Yeah, because that's nice. You know what? And Wear it. You know, yeah. and the state reception, come. Do you know what? You're over from America. You stayed longer because of the circumstance. Just go. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of the bigger thing to do. How bad and I think can it be? <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know, like, and you know, Joe Biden was there, so it would have been quite useful for him to have a, another American in the room. I don't know. I mean, I just think that would have just been a, would have been a better. Families, a, families. Families, a, you know. Families indeed, and what, of course, you know, we don't look ahead too far before Harry's book potentially coming out at some time. Whether he's rewriting vast chapters of it now to make it less controversial, who knows? There's the Netflix fly on the wall documentary. I'm sure between Netflix and Harper Collins, the book publishers, they're probably going, well, who gets the first bite of the Harry exclusive? And 
on it goes um and talking of which next week we we are hoping to interview um or chat to uh, valentine lowe who is the oh, author yes. of uh, the book the new book courtiers, courtiers. Yeah, yeah it's being serialized uh, in the times at the moment yeah. just while we're still on yeah. uh, the funeral i want to mention the corgis and oh. the pony <gasps> the pony because uh, terry pendry know, Everything, Aww. nothing with the royal family is left a chance. Every detail is thought about. Everything is very carefully planned. And there was her beloved pony, yeah. Emma. But standing in amongst pony. all the flowers that people had left that they'd kind of laid that as a carpet shot. of flowers. Yeah, and they'd taken and all the wrappings off. And that, uh, was that uh, aerial shot then, with the, the yeah. huge crowds, the procession, the flowers, the pony. With Terry Pendry. Ter explain who Terry Pendry is for those who don't know. He literally used to go riding with the Queen. I mean, he, that's, that was his job. Take the Queen riding. She wasn't, he wasn't the trainer. He was just basically her... her he she obviously just really riding. liked his company. Talking of horses, um, today, the first... The King will have his first runner. Which educator. presumably is one of the, one of the Queen's... Yeah. The right. He's taken horses. over the... What's wasn't it, educator meant to run at Epsom and didn't... Yeah, right. educator. And what, are his race, what will his racing colours be? Same silk. Same. Yeah, so the silks will be out this afternoon, Thursday, so we'll know oh, that's by nice. the time it's out. But yes, the Corgis too, they were in the quadrangle. Um, uh, Mick, Mick and Sandy. Mick and Sandy. Mick, M-U-I-C-K, from, from Loch Mick near, in Scotland. Near Scotland. Not so we've Muck. Got I thought it was Muck <laughs> to begin with, isn't it? No. And the Corgis will and now... And also it's not Loch, it's Loch. Oh, yes, the of course. The Corgis well, will well, now, well, we're on now be reading looked after tablets. by <laughs> Prince Andrew. Um, he gifted them to the Queen and has now... Mm, yes, well, taking them back. Some people who yeah. say that's a good thing, others who work might disagree. But anyway, um, okay, well, we we should we should wrap up. Um, I'm, not, I'm not even looking at the time on the on the recording clock, but it's probably a <laughs> lot, long, a lot longer. Forty-six minutes. Okay. I'm sure we could do another it's, fifteen it's to be honest. A lot and the than rest. I thought it might be. <laughs> I'm not sure that the, the listener really wants a, a podcast this long. But as can, you can, can I ask you one last question? Yes. Have you recovered yet? No, I mean, <laughs> Lizzie. <laughs> No, but no. I mean, it was an extraordinary privilege Wasn't to be it? able of to course, do Of course, and the responsibility and was, was huge. And actually, I've had a lot thinking. of people coming up to me so, saying, thank you. I don't quite understand what yeah. I did. I just did my job. But I've had a lot of people, even strange people, coming up and saying, thanks for what you did yeah. uh, over that period. Obviously, we were never off air, so they didn't have much, <laughs> <laughs> much choice. Here we are again. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> still us. <laughs> still us. But yeah, you're um, right. It did feel... Like a, I mean, this you do this stuff. This is your, this is your beat, but uh, I felt like a real privilege to be along for the ride. I must say, history and all history, that was yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Felt so lucky to be there. And uh, Monday, King Scotland. So the King, he has been. We should no, mention we, the we King. Um, after the state funeral, he went back to Balmoral. I mean, I thought during those twelve days he had a, you know. He yeah. was in the public eye a lot, yeah. and you know, I said earlier, having having to grieve so publicly, he did retreat to Balmoral and has been working, carrying out yeah. uh, official duties, red boxes that he now. Well, we know does. what he's like. I keep saying, um, what he, we know what Prince Charles is like. We can't say that anymore. We know what the King um, yes. is like. I, I think one of my conversations with you, mm. so I'm told by younger people, went viral because twice I said. His Majesty the Queen. Yes, you did. And then I corrected myself and said, His Majesty the Queen again. I mean, and then I said, King. You mean King. Yes, <laughs> King. That one. But actually, I was pleased to find other broadcasters. I spoke to people from Sky and the BBC. Kept doing the same thing. Absolutely. Prince Charles. No, sorry, King Charles. Uh, you know, It's really difficult. The queen, late Queen, Queen Consort. I mean, anyway. But do um, you, are you surprised by how quickly it has become yes. normal? Yes. God save the king. We were yeah. just sing it now. Um, uh, we have a king. I always thought it would take us months to get used to it, but it kind of, that's the, yeah. the constancy of monarchy. It just yeah. carries on. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. And it I mean, um, that, we haven't even spoken about the accession council, that the man in a tunic with a big scroll was reading... And oh, the heralds, yay, oh, yay. the trumpeters. Yeah, what's he called? The garter king of arms. Yes, you know, the, the queen is deceased. We have a new king. I mean, this is, the whole thing was and, and, just crazy. And then crazy. all the Privy Council who were there all signing their names. And yeah. it was like looking at the last 30 years of politics. Yeah, it was all, these, know, all the great and the good. The prime ministers and the, like, and the Archbishop saying, of York. Uh, yeah, uh, I Centre approve Move. this man will be king. You know, like. <laughs> he, he obviously his pen ran out. He did a little scribble on the side of the, um, <laughs> of the vellum or whatever it was just to make it work. We've oh, all been there, haven't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like I say, there's so much, so much we didn't talk about and we, and we probably 
should end quite soon. But yes, King, King Monday, Scotland, Dunfermline Monday. and Edinburgh. So actually two two visits he's doing. Um, uh, and actually, we should probably note that what he's chosen Scotland as the place for his first ever official visit with the Queen Consort. Mm -hmm. Again, nothing happens by mistake in the royal family. They've clearly thought about this and that's why they want to do it. Yeah, and I so. suspect, you know, over the next few months, we will see the King, the Queen Consort, Prince and Princess of Wales getting out across the UK in their new roles. Uh, yeah. And I think they need to do UK before they start the travelling yeah. abroad. You know, if, if I think if you went off to a Commonwealth realm and it looks a bit desperate, like, please don't become a republic, yeah. you know, don't yeah, dump yeah, me yeah. as king. But uh, equally, they, they do need to get to those realms because he yeah. is their king as much as he is He's the king, king yeah. of the UK. Canada he, has a king. King of king Canada, of 14 the king realms of Australia, and the, Australia, UK, the so king of New Zealand. We need to get to them. Always try and name all 14 and we always fail. <laughs> one day I'm going to remember all 14 what, what, one day you will. But this, this, this is the new slim down monarchy we're starting to see, isn't it? Yeah, we've kind of really only got two households now. I mean, no, no massive disrespect to Princess Royal, who does a great job, and the, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, who might, we haven't even spoken about that, might become the future Duke of Edinburgh. Um, but we kind of got two households, Buckingham Palace for the King and Queen Consort and Kensington Palace for the Prince and Princess of Wales. And there does remain a question mark over Archie and Lilibet. They are now as grandchildren of the monarch. Uh, they are entitled to Prince and Princess, but that hasn't been decided. It's still... It's not on the website, is it? It's still being decided, we're told. So um, Yes, yes. They are, they are still master. May, uh, maybe it'll depend the how, the, uh, how the book plays out. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so, still, this this royal story doesn't end. As you just pointed out, it continues very much. Uh, you know, we're now in a new era. King, what does he do? Prince and Princess of Wales. You know, George will obviously grow older in, in due course. We the, can bore for Britain on this. The, the, we the, really the, can. the monarchy is always evolving and changing, but always there. Yeah. Uh, and we've kind of been here a bit too much lately uh, on air. So we are going to go back to having just three bulletins a day, lunchtime, evening and 10. We'll have our website and our podcast and all the rest of it. But no longer will we be dominating ITV's airways with endless coverage of me and you talking about royal things. <laughs> and what probably year best. was the first colour broadcast of the Queen's <laughs> speech? Oh, Lord. 1976, I hear. All, all, of the, <laughs> all of those details I can now flush from my mind. I don't need them anymore. Well, you never know. I might test you on this podcast. Thank you. When was the first? televised um, Christmas message Ooh, I know it was from Sandringham it was from Sandringham I think it was and it was live I know that might live on Christmas Day afternoon I mean how would that ruin your Christmas seriously oh, yeah. uh, I'm going for 56 but anyway so it's 57 I don't just know just a guess um, this year of course the Queen the, the, sorry the Queen's Christmas message made the mistake again it's going to be yeah, the King's go. Christmas address yeah wow who, because ITV and BBC take it in turns to film and it. And Sky as well, actually. And so Sky, actually, so, so whose so turn is it this ours. year, do you know? So is we've it? actually, we've done the the last one of the Queen and the first one wow. of the New King. So well, that's well. interesting. You were close. Oh, 1957. Oh, okay. Come on. Close. That's yeah, pretty wrong. good. Wrong, but close. Wrong, but close. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine. Uh, which is probably a good place to end it. This wrong but closed podcast. Yeah. In fact, it might make you question all the facts we've spoken about I'm just now. Gonna, just going to bring in a yeah. little bit of breaking news oh. that we've had. Um, the Queen's death certificate has just been released by the National Records of Scotland. And it says the Queen died of old age at 3.10pm on September the 8th. 3 10 p.m. Oh, I'm seeing it here actually. I'm just downloading it as we speak. This is like breaking news on a podcast. Because there was a question and, and of whether it would be re released, wasn't there? But it obviously has been. Um, yes, um, I've died of old age. Is that a thing? Is that Inter a thing? Interestingly, we... that's that's the same as the Duke of Edinburgh. Okay. I mean, they were old, that's for sure. There we are. Um, I'm looking at it now. So, um, does it give a time of death? So the year of three ten. Three ten. Yep. Three ten on. So that now was. I think what's significant about three ten p.m. is that. What time for did the that for um, the royals that were travelling up, uh, the Duke, the then Duke of Cambridge, Duke of York, and Earl of Wessex. Wessex Cause of death. They old arrived age. at Balmoral at four thirty. Oh, so they didn't see her before she died. And the Duke of Sussex didn't get there until much later. So, um, but the prince, then Prince of Wales, now King, was there because he came straight from. Uh, he was, was already he? in Scotland. He was, wasn't he? Was he was in Scotland, as was uh, the Princess Royal. Yes. So they were 
perhaps at her bedside. And I read some of the corgis were there as well. And yes. I, I, I hope that. they were. Yes. I, yes. We end the podcast with breaking yeah. news. Well, there we are. Not often that we do that. Um, Mary, thank you. Thank Such you. Such a pleasure. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. You're, welcome, well. you're welcome any time. Thanks a lot. It feels more normal to be with you than not with you if you're... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if I'm honest. We do yeah. this every week. Have a natter about the royals. You're welcome any time. Oh, thank you. I might drop well, in with my mug of tea. Drop in. Yes, yes anytime bring, you like. bring tea and you can come back. Um, uh, next week, uh, Valentine Low, we hope. And uh, we will also be reporting from Scotland on Monday. Yep. Um, I'll spend the rest of the week laying in a dark room. Yeah. So, um, sorry. And he's Liz looking, he's looking, looking at me to say, no, you can't say that, and you can't he's say looking that. At me, we have this um, at the end of every podcast. Every podcast. Like, what, what is I happening next this? week? No. no, you can't say that. You can't say this, but you can say that. Yeah, they make okay. things so complicated. You're not allowed to say any more. No more. Um, thank you for listening. Um, this has been the uh, Royal Rotor from ITV. We try and do it every week. There was a, obviously a little bit of delay uh, getting to this.